Hello there. Today we're making the waistband and the main prerequisite for this is you need some proper trouser canvas. You need a piece of proper heavy green daddy canvas which is four centimeters wide or however wide you would like your waistband with a piece of bias cut a much lighter bias cut canvas or in a pinch I would imagine some fabric with a centimeter of overlap on it and it's stitched and being stitched together about halfway down that. I've tried making trousers with another canvas that I have. Well no I haven't because I decided that it would be a complete and total waste of time and energy but you need the heavy crin canvas because it is like, okay, I mean, maybe the fact that I'm squeezing it over is, isn't quite illustrating the point I'm making, but it does not, okay, well, it will not permanently crease and it consistently springs back to its original shape. Or not, but I don't know. I'm not an expert. Literally everything else could be calico, but you need some of this heavy grin canvas. Links in the description. To be honest, you could probably completely skip the pattern drafting and trouser leg preparation bit altogether and just use a 40 or so length of nondescript fabric of a equally of an equally nondescript height. Timestamps in the description. But in the meantime... I'm going to draft these straight onto my trouser fabric because I'm lazy like that. And they're very simple. You can probably more easily draft them each time than making a pattern. You can, but you don't need me to tell you that. I just don't be having time for it. Start with two rectangles next to each other. One will be 20 centimeters wide and the other will be 23 centimeters wide. The operative point here being that one of them is three centimeters larger than the other. <clears throat> and both at least 18 centimeters tall, at least. Measure down from the top of your rectangles three centimeters and draw a line all the way across. This will be your waistband inlay and technically the top of your pattern. At the point that they meet, measure down 11 centimeters from the waistband inlay and measure in one centimeter on both patterns. Connect these points with diagonal lines. On the wider of the two not rectangles anymore, draw parallel lines three centimeters in from the no longer straight edge. This is your inlay. On that same trouser piece, which I'm sure we now know is the back one, find the midpoint of the waistline between the inlay and the other edge. Make a dart eight centimeters down and two centimeters wide at the top. What's new here is that the dart needs to be mirrored on the waist inlay so that it can be folded over neatly. You also need to cut the waistband. That will be the length of the two pieces plus a little I'd say. I'm being arbitrary here because it's a sample, but it does need to be six centimeters wide. Grain wise it's cut along perpendicular to that which you'd expect. So it's cut down the leg. For now it's just more efficient material wise to cut across the grain. I've marked the grain arrows to make my point. They'd all be pointing in the same direction. Belt loops would also be cut that way, as is the side tab adjusters, which all of which we'll get to later. We already talked about the heavy green daddy canvas, but you also need to cut linings. These could be silicia or another kind of lining, like silk, if say you enjoy going commando while wearing suits. No judgments. The waistband lining is six centimeters and the length of the waistband. And the curtain will be twice as long as you want the curtain to hang and is also as long as the waistband plus at least 20 centimeters or and more than that if convenient. You'll know how much more you want once you'll know what's going on with it later.
be sure to mark stitch the waistline and the inlay. Except, I suppose we're doing one leg, so at least base the lines. Sew the dart that you drew, sew the two trousers together, being sure that the front is sewn against the inlay and not the edge of your pattern. And not all the way to the end, covering up the whole inlay. Iron the dart towards the inlay and iron open the side seam. On the inside with the waistband, mark a 1cm seam allowance. You have already prepared your canvas with its light bias cut canvas, so place the side which doesn't have the bias canvas up against the line, such that the bias cut canvas is on top of the crin canvas. Sew down the middle of the overlap of the canvas and waistband, so with a 0.5 cm seam allowance. Iron the waistband down over the crin, and for best results, proceed to base the bottom of the waistband to the several times aforementioned bias canvas. Line the bottom of the waistband up against the mark stitched or basted line on the trouser, and they're being sewn together right at the point that the light canvas meets the heavy canvas. So it's a one centimeter seam allowance. Iron the seam open and Just ignore the sudden presence of side tab adjusters, we'll get to those. First, mark the halfway point on the front trouser. If you put in a pleat, you won't need to, because you'll see it, but regardless, easing in the curtain needs to be present. The curtain is doubled up so that the fraying ends are secured in the waistband and under the fly bits. Yes, it is one continuous piece all around the waistband, we'll get to that. Align the curtain at the front of the trouser. It'd usually be hidden underneath some part of the fly, and against the folded up portion of the waistband. Begin to baste it to the trouser, and a little before you get to the midpoint that you marked, fold the curtain in on itself, making a pleat. Fold about 2 centimeters or some other arbitrary length, like the length of the tip of your finger. I am basting the dumb way through the heavy crin canvas. You're much better off basting below the waistband, as I soon realise. Keep basting and turn the curtain in at the side seam and at the back dart. When you get to the back of the trouser, fold the curtain in once more and then mirror that for the other side. You won't have any trouser to baste it onto at the moment with our patterns. You could leave it flapping there or cut it, I defer to you, it's your sample. But of course, you just keep basting it on the actual trouser. To fix it in place, you could fold the waistband out of the way and machine it, or you could be an actual tailor and use your cross stitch to fix it to the crin. Don't go through the waistband material though. It doesn't need to be so dense or pretty, just functional. It's going to be completely hidden under the lining. To attach the waistband lining, press a 1cm seam on both sides and baste it to the waistband, and we'll fell it. It's about this point that I realise this could be machined to the waistband at the same time that the waistband was being put together. You'd find yourself with problems if you wanted to attach belt loops, but you don't want belt loops. Side tab adjusters will do fine. Machining though would save you about half an hour of felling. Now that your basic waistband is done, we'll get to the uh, some additional bits, like these. I personally suggest doing this before attaching the curtain, but you could maybe do it after the curtain. To make this pattern, I'd start from a central point and move 18cm vertically one side and 11cm the other. Then go 3cm horizontally either side of the start point. This Measurement changes with the width of the buckle. In short, 
take the buckle's width and add a centimeter. Remember, this is done down the grain, the long side parallel to the trouser leg. Draw perpendicular lines from the 18 centimeter and 11 centimeter lines, making sure they're centered, and on the long side it's 5.5 centimeters wide, and on the shorter side it's 4.5 centimeters wide. From the thin point, chalk a curved line to your ends. You kind of don't need to draw the curve on both sides since we're going to fold it in half and then cut it out. Then you'll cut it in two at the slimmest point. They're going to be folded in half and stitched on the curve with a half centimeter seam allowance. And on the long side, and on the long side only, you'll also close the slim end, being sure to fold open the seam allowance. Before folding them inside out, iron open the seam allowance so that when you do fold them out, the seam allowance won't bunch up to one side. Snip away the corners of the long adjuster so that the seam will sit nicely in there. Then iron them flat and symmetrical. To hide the raw edges, we're only going to fold them over and iron them in place, making sure that they too are symmetrical. Do that for both tabs. When sewing them onto the trouser, the buckle should be centered on the side seam, but the exact height of the tabs is up to you and, and or whomever the trouser is going to belong to. Completely on the waistband, half and half, three quarters on the waistband, up to you. Do note though that the short tab points towards your front, so you're pulling the tab backwards to tighten the waist, and the long tab is pointing towards your rear. You're best beginning with the short tab because it is fixed and you can easily determine the halfway point of the buckle and line that up to the side seam. When you fix the tabs, you'll base them in place first and then you could fell or prick stitch them. You need to prick stitch the cross seam because, well, you need to prick stitch the cross seam regardless because you kinda can't fell it. I would, and did, and will continue to chalk where that particular prick stitch is going to be so that my other fells or pricks don't go behind it and that I have a straight line to guide me. Why you'd want belt loops is anyone's guess, but I suppose you ought to know anyway. This changes the trouser from the point that we attach the waistband. You are deciding how many belt loops you want, the normal number is 6, and mine are 5 by 7 centimeters, which I find out later is far too small. This was the first time I'd done belt loops, so go easy on me. I mark the grain line onto them to illustrate that the long side is parallel to your trouser leg. You can change the length with the width of the waistband and the width of your belt as we'll find out. The width of the loops is something that you can change too, so have at it. Fold them in half and sew them together with a half centimeter seam allowance, making them easier to flip inside out than a whole centimeter would. Before you do that though, iron the seam open gently so that when you flip it inside out, the seam will be open and not, you know, bulking one side, bulking up one side. So, then be sure to give it some welly to get it flat. Mark where you want your loops to sit on the trouser and base them in place. Somehow I divided the width of my pattern by 3 and ended up with 10, 11, and 9. Then I made the mistake of lining them up against the waistline with a centimeter over the waistline. Just line the tops of the belt loops against the waistline, just like the waistband. 
but it would do you no good to watch me correct my mistake. It'll do you much better to make that mistake yourself. When you press the waistband seam open, you're pressing the belt loop end up into the waistband and on the outside, pressing it down a little before folding it back up to the waistband. This accounts for your belt being slightly larger than, you know, your waistband. Like I said earlier, attaching the waistband lining gets in our way, but you'd press the top of the loop down over the waistband and, and attach it with a cross stitch or a blanket stitch, or go way back in time and attach them with the waistband lining. But if you can't, you can still fill the waistband lining on like normal. Like I said, I hadn't done belt loops before, but I think I got the general idea across. This step is also slipped in before attaching the waistband, but you first need to cut your pocket. You can make this as big or small as you like, add a centimeter on both sides, though because we're going to French seam it closed. The back is also going to be around two and a half centimeters higher than the front. I'm making mine out of one piece and I will simply fold it up in two. When you put the two pieces together, whether it's being folded up or you're using two separate pieces, <clears throat> fold down the front between half a centimeter and one centimeter, which will be used to connect the pocket to the trouser. I'm using a half centimeter. Cut the bit that you folded back free of the stitching and fold it inside out to French the seam. Though only machine from and back up to the bit of fabric that you cut. You need it free for attaching to the inlay. Mark where you want to put the bag onto the trouser. I suggest starting at the trouser front's midpoint and going back from there. Where you want to mark is only between the point that the trouser bag opens, so not the cumulative centimeter that our French seams. Armed with these marked points, you're attaching the waistband, but you're skipping the marked section. Be sure to back tack both sides so it doesn't come loose. Having pressed open the seam of the waistband, line the pocket up to the open section and machine the short flappy bit to the waistband inlay, moving the trouser out of the way. Fold the waistband out of the way and sew the top of the pocket to the waistband seam. It's about this point that you could introduce a flap or a button tab if you wanted to. From here, you're attaching the lining and you just want to keep in mind that you don't want to be going through both layers of the pocket. You could prick stitch it here, you could bar tack both corners, both sides of the opening, or not. I'll let you and whoever you're making the suit for decide. You know, I honestly thought this was going to be even longer than my last video, but then it turns out I was, but it turned out I was slightly shy. But I think regardless, I'm getting better at this whole editing lark, keeping everything more clear and concise. Nope, I've just come back from editing and it is a shit show. The next video is going to be the trouser zip, so you may want to get like a 14 or 14 to 18 centimeter, you know, trouser zip. And I recommend no other brand than YKK, unless you can get your hands on a re re one. Re re. Re re. Re re. A re re zip. And you can get slightly curved specialized fly zips but that isn't technically necessary. See you in a fortnight.